So Vitaly, let's take me through, I brought the patient into your office before. It's now three months after you've seen the patient. Give me their multimodal regimen. How often do you see them back? What kind of counseling do you give them about the, the progress of this, this disease, PHN? Sure. So I typically um, would have this patient by now on uh, at least three agents. It would be a topical agent. And uh, I personally do not use in my practice uh, the 8% capsaicin patch. Um, but I do use capsaicin. I do combine capsaicin with lidoderm or lidocaine 5% patch. I would ask the patient to have lidocaine patch prior up to the application of uh, herpy, uh, I mean, uh, uh, zoster or capsaicin uh, cream. Uh, obviously, you have to have, especially with um, the uh, uh, elderly patients and even with younger patients, to uh, educate them uh, how to use it, that they have to wear uh, gloves and so forth in order not to touch other parts of their body, which will be very, very uncomfortable. By now, I would also have them on uh, one of the gabapentinoids, and I would have them on uh, norepinephrine reuptake inhibiting uh, uh, antidepressant. I don't think we should completely ignore the role of opioids. And uh, it was mentioned prior that they are not the first line treatment for neuropathic pain. But in certain patients who already have uh, been through these uh, treatments from different groups, uh, again, gabapentinoids, norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, uh, topical agents, um, uh, substance P inhibitors such as um, capsaicin. I would consider adding very carefully, we're talking about quite often not very vigorous, not very you know, uh, functional from the physical status standpoint patients, I would add uh, certain medications. I am personally somewhat bias towards methadone, although there is no huge evidence that an MDA reuptake, uh, 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 I'm sorry, an MDA uh, antagonistic properties in addition to mu uh, agonistic properties is so, so beneficial. But I would exercise extreme caution, especially in the elderly population. I might start them on 2.5 milligrams. Uh, twice a day or something like this, um, in addition to, to these medications. So the message that I'm hearing is that no single agent is typically effective. As we talked about before, all of these agents have partial efficacy. And hence, while your patient progressed through first and second line agents, even up to and including third and maybe fourth line, things like opioids. Very challenging clinical, uh, clinical scenario. Joe, when I think about these medications, almost as, as important as with opioids, how do we educate patients about the adverse effects, the warnings when it comes to these neuropathic agents? Sure, so I, I think uh, it, it's critically important, again, at least from my standpoint, to first, before we even talk about the adverse events, first have the expectations set so that they're not expecting immediate gratification with these agents. Because I've looked over so many charts before where they've churned through every single one of these, and they've only given it you know, two days, five days, a week. Um, I've also looked through a number of charts where uh, they've had adverse effects and that has put them into this vicious circle whereby as you increase the dosage, you have more tolerability uh, problems and then they come off that drug. So first thing I'll do is try to, f I'll tell them about the various adverse effects. After they've tried a trial, bring them back in and talk to them. Perfect example, if someone's on a compound like duloxetine and they say, you know, I take it in the morning, but when I go to work, I'm really tired all day. Oh, and then I don't sleep at night. Well, maybe you want to take this drug at night then, right? And you're going to sleep all through the night. Maybe that's how we do it, because it's a once a day drug. So I think what I'll, I'll cautious, uh, I'll give them proper caution on potential common adverse events for each class of drugs that we see. Uh, and then I will also see if there are ways to make that adverse event potentially a positive. And, and that's how I try to get around for that. That's great. Well, our discussion has.